Hey Vlad here, DiamondSideU.com. Welcome to another video. In the previous video we created our own Scala fix rule from scratch, but if you wanted to be technical about it, it wasn't really from scratch, was it? We started by using a Jitterate template. Jitterate is a command line tool which generates files and directories from templates which are usually published to GitHub or at least Git or even a good old HTTP server. In this mini playlist we're going to learn the ins and outs of Jitterate and even create our own templates in the process. Let's get right to it. Let's begin by going straight to the website which is foundweekends.org slash jitterate. So jitterate is a command line tool to generate files and directories from templates published on GitHub or any other Git repository. It's implemented in Scala and runs through the SPT launcher but it can produce output for any purpose. So originally it was a standalone command line tool and you know it still exists. Uh, when we will go to the usage we'll see how to use it without SPT but these days you don't actually need to. Uh, SPT can do pretty much everything that you need. Here's a simple example of usage. So you just say SPT new and then some GitHub uh, organization or GitHub username and then slash some repository name. So if I were to take scalaseed.g8 and I would just search for it, I would find something over here. So as you can see, this is Scala slash Scala CG8. So this is exactly this repository that would be resolved automatically by uh, Jitterate when you say SPT new and then Scala slash uh, Scala CG8. As you can see, it has been written by Nathan Hamblin and some other contributors. And in the 2000 year 2016, it, it has been adapted by the Found Weekends project and it's licensed under Apache. So if we just keep going and we go to usage, uh, we're going to see that uh, again, like if you were to install uh, Jitterate uh, or G8, which is pronounced Jitterate uh, yourself, then you would be able to do the same thing, um, you know, with, with G8. Uh, one thing that you need to know is that um, a G8 is a little bit more forgiving than SPT. Uh, for instance, it doesn't always require this .G8 um, extension. As you can see, this repository, for example, is ending with .G8. However, SBT always requires .G8, especially if you're working with uh, local files or, you know, HTTP servers. Over here, you also see that you can uh, use the uh, Git URL directly, right? So you can say G8, uh, HTTPS, and so on. Uh, you can also use uh, any other uh, Git repository. You can also uh, use any other uh, HTTP server. And also, you can just say G8 file, colon, slash, slash, and then point it to a local folder. And again, uh, with G8, I believe you don't need the .G8 in the end, uh, but with SBT, you actually need to have a folder or repository called .G8, even uh, if you're using it locally. What you see over here is an example of the so-called template fields. So G8 is an interactive tool and if the template has some fields, it will prompt you for each field and it will show you the default in these brackets. So if you're happy with the default, you just press enter and keep going. Now you can bypass this whole interactive process by passing the uh, parameters directly uh, like this, but unfortunately this comes at a price, right? So this is a, um, you know, the, the, the template field will be called name and this will be the value. And unfortunately it comes at a price which is specified right here. Any unsupplied parameters are assigned their default value. So uh, I don't really like this. I would have preferred to specify all the others in the interactive way, but you know, that's how it works. Jitterate also has other flags that you can pass into it. Uh, unfortunately, the website doesn't specify them. So I installed Jitterate uh, locally and I ran it once and it showed me all of the flags so we can go through them uh, real quick. So I just have a Sublime instance open and uh, I can just show you. So there's hyphen B, so you can go through a very specific GitHub branch or to a GitHub tag. You can also uh, go to a uh, specific directory inside of the GitHub repository. You can uh, specify the output, right? So in which directory to generate um, the project that I described by the template. You can also uh, force the overrides because by default, a GA does not generate files which already exist or directories uh, as well. Um, okay, you can also display the version and this is what we have already, already seen, right? So you can say, for example, half and half and name equals and then some value. Okay, uh, here are a few examples. So you can just uh, get a repository straight from GitHub uh, or with a direct uh, URL, or you can specify a branch, specify a tag, specify a directory, uh, specify an output, and you can also use a local directory. And as you can see over here, it doesn't say repo.g8. However, if you do SPT new over here, right? So if you do this, then the repo should always end with g8, okay? Otherwise, SBT is not going to um, understand this, okay? Let me revert that like this. The last paragraph on the user space show you that Jitterate is capable of resolving private repositories as well, and uh, you will be prompted to enter your SSH key. However, this only works if you're using um, this syntax 
right if you're going through the uh, you know through the URL directly if you're going through this uh, you're not going to use your SSH keys you're going to use your username and password instead as you can see this is pretty much where the usage page ends and before going and taking a look at how to create our own templates uh, let's actually go ahead and use a couple of templates ourselves there are two places where you can find jitterate templates one is straight at the wiki and the link is going to be down in the description but basically you go to the found weekends um, github and then uh, you click on jitterate and then you click on uh, wiki and then over here you can see jitterate templates okay and here is a list of all the templates and we're going to just grab one of them uh, in just a bit maybe i can actually increase the size a little bit like this another way is to simply search for dot g8 uh, on github right so make sure that you click this one all github and then you can also go down and press only scala and um, yeah i don't know best match whatever that means uh, maybe most stars or something like this as you can see uh, a couple of GA templates, which reminds me, uh, Jitterate was written in Scala and therefore it is used very widely in Scala. However, Jitterate itself is agnostic of what it generates, right? So you can generate whatever you want, you know, HTML files, anything you like. All right, so let's use a couple of them. So for example, let's uh, grab this one. We can just copy that. I'm gonna go to my other workspace, which is the Ubuntu workspace. So I'm just gonna open the terminal and I'm gonna go into my dev folder and there's nothing in there. And I'm just gonna say SPT new, and then I'm just gonna paste that. I'm gonna press enter and SPT will start, which usually takes a couple of seconds. Then it will download the template and it will start prompting me for, um, for the template fields. All right, should be finished in a couple of seconds. There we go. A minimal Scala project, as you can see, it uses a name. So we need to specify the name. This is also going to be the name of the directory and the default value is Scala seed project. I'm gonna change this to something like to do app. Notice the capitalization and spacing is gonna be important in just a couple of seconds. Okay, so I'm gonna press enter. It turns out that this was the only field. And so it generated a folder called to do app exactly where I was. So if I type in LL, I will see, okay, there is a folder called to do app. And notice that it rewrote it in such a way that, you know, my file system is happy with it. So I can just open the to do app with Visual Studio Code. It should take a couple of seconds to start. And I disabled the metals integration. So let's see what it generated. It generated a build SPT file with some, you know, basic basic stuff. So Scala version is 2.13, the version is 0.1.0 snapshot. There is no organization, there is no organization name. It's just a simple project with just a, you know, it's just a to-do app. Uh, also there is some comment, you know, there's a link to somewhere. Uh, let's go into project. So go to, it went to the build properties and set the SPT version to 1.2.8, which happens to be the last one. Uh, let's look at the dependencies. Um, okay, so it also went for um, for Scala test without specifying that it's only for the for the test scope. However, if we go to build, it probably yeah it specifies the test scope over here. Uh, let's see. It also created a file called dependencies.scala. Notice that it's in project, and because it's a .scala file in project, we can access it from build.spt, which is exactly what's happening. So if we go to build.spt, the first thing that is happening is import dependencies underscore. Let's go into source source test example hello spec so it uses scala test it uses the flat spec so there are some tests we're probably going to try running them in just a bit and also there is hello.scala okay package example blah 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 notice also that in the build it used the name exactly as we specified right however it renamed the folder i mean vs code shows it with capitalization but if i just uh, press that which is control tilde it will open the console the folder is uh, as just as a reminder call to do a hyphen app so let's start spt let's let it load for a bit and it turns out that we have a main method so we will, we will be able to run this main method and also we have some tests so we'll be able to run the tests as well so spt pretty much um all right it tries to compile uh something for scala to 12.7 this is actually happening because spt itself was written into 12.7 so in fact i'm going to show you a trick uh, if we go to build and if we just grab that and if we go to um, let's create a file here called not there over here in project let's create a file called plugin status pt this is how it's usually called if you paste that over there let's do 212 uh, nine is the latest one and let's hope that it's gonna work so by the way notice that the name is used here as well we can actually run Oops, run. And uh, we're also going to run the test in just a second, right? So you see hello. And if we run the test, it's going to compile something. 
All right, so hold up, let me restart it again. So because I'm specifying the, the version in the in the project, um, then SPT, so, so yeah, so it's in the project folder. So this is the version that um, SPT will use sort of for, for itself, right? So if I had this before, uh, we wouldn't have seen this, uh, you know, compiling the Scala bridge for Scala to 12.7, right? It doesn't change anything. I just wanted to show you this thing real quick. Okay, so we can run again, we can test again. Um, everything looks exactly the same. So we're pretty much done with this template. Let's go and grab another one. In fact, I'm going to close it like that. I'm going to press Control L. So all we have there is a to-do app. Okay, so let's go. Let's go back and grab which one? Let's grab this one. Okay, just grab that. Whoops, grab that. And we're gonna say SPT new, just paste, and SPT will take a few seconds to start again. It will find the template. It will, you know, it will expand this whole thing to the entire uh, GitHub URL, and it will start applying the template. All right, the name PlayScala.js. Um, I don't know. Let's say that this is some some blog app. Okay. All right. Organization com dot dev inside you package. So. Usually organization is used as a package, but uh, we could also change it. For example, we could say, uh, let's use just dev inside you dot uh, blog app like this. As you can see also that it can use your input in the next, um, you know, in the next template fields. But we're going to see this more once we're going to start creating our own templates. Okay, so let's do that. And it applied it. So if I do LL, we see there's the blog app. I open it with Visual Studio Code like this. And I'm going to open the console right away. Actually, uh, you know what, let me go to uh, build properties because I always want to make sure that it uses the same SBT version as I so that it doesn't uh, start downloading stuff. So let's just change it to uh, 1.2.8. Let's also make sure that it uses the latest Scala version um, again so that we don't have to compile any bridges. Blah, 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 2.12.5. Okay, so there's 2.12.9 already. Let's see if this is already enough. Let's just start this with SPT. You absolutely didn't need to do this, right? It would have worked with the older versions as well. I just want to save us some time and, uh, you know, not make SPT download its own version and then uh, compiling the Scala bridge again and blah, 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 all of these things. Okay, let's see if we if we got lucky. All right, it was actually taking so long that I wasn't sure if SPT was still working, so I actually killed it and started again. And this time it took like one entire minute to load, but whatever it was doing, um, my hunch is that it's the resolving of the dependencies. Um, in any case, so it started and it seems to be a multi-build project. So if we do projects, then we see that there is a blog app client. So blog app is the root project and there's there's client, there's server, there's shared JS, shared JVM. So uh, this seems to be a uh, Scala JS template as well. So by default, it, it jumped to the server. So let's just go and do a run. And obviously we're not gonna go through the whole thing because we don't really care about all the things that it generated. Let's just do a run and uh, now it should start resolving all the things again so i'm going to cut it out from the video because it's going to take forever otherwise i can't actually wait for um, spt 130 which should come out really really soon uh, because then it uses course here by default and then it's going to be much much uh, faster all right it's compiling something and there we go running the application auto reloading is enabled uh, it looks like we see an um, ipv6 address so if we just uh, go to localhost 9000 um then we should see something okay so let me go down like this let me uh launch a browser okay All right localhost oops it didn't copy localhost uh 9000 and we're not seeing anything let's go back oh we see an error unresolved dependency scala js compiler blah, blah blah on 0628 all right okay so we just need to find 0623 and to change it to the latest version which is 2.8 i believe and just hope that it is published for uh for our version okay so let's reload let's run again all right let's go to the browser reload the page and maybe we see something in the console uh, okay that's interesting that was probably too early all right something something okay we see something and some exception as well. What's the exception? I'm curious. Out of memory. Oh my God, SPT, Jesus. All right, let's kill it. Oh, come on, just die. All right. I wanna run it once, once properly. And let's say run. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to the browser, reload. And what is it doing? Oh, there we go. So now load it. No exceptions. All right, let's reload the page. There we go. So now everything is uh, loaded properly. Cool. So let's close this one. 
and uh, in fact uh, let's also close this Visual Studio Code instance and what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna start uh, creating our own template and we're gonna start creating it uh, with, uh, within this to-do app okay so I'm just gonna open this like this okay and I'm gonna change a bunch of things in just a second so let's go back to the page uh, which is over here and we can see there are two points there's uh, making your own templates and there's also the scaffolding plugin so Jitterate can do basically two things for you but it's actually only one thing it's just a little bit different so um, making your own templates means you, you know using the templates that we, ju that we just just use right so somebody created them you just uh, get them from github the entire directory structure is generated now scaffolding is very very similar but it's it just feels a bit much smaller so um, let's say that you have a project like we do you know we have the project to do app and inside of it we can define our own scaffoldings and then we can use the scaffolding plugin to uh, run them right so our these scaffoldings they're basically templates in their own right uh, but they feel kind of smaller right so they use usually for I don't know generating like one file or a small directory you know within your project so we're gonna start from there uh, because again it feels smaller and it's actually so so similar than uh, that by the time that we're gonna start creating our own templates I'll basically say you know I'll basically start saying things like yeah well it, it works pretty much exactly the same as a scaffolding okay so let's go back to our to-do app and uh, let me uh, remove a bunch of stuff from it uh, for example if I go to build SPT all I actually want is uh, this and uh, I actually don't want any of that I don't want any of that I just want to have that what's this line it just studio code come on there we go all right uh, we also don't need this build because it's not gonna be a multi build okay so this is the only thing that I need and I also want to say um, SPT auto start no it's just called auto start server I believe auto start um, server false like this we also don't need come on false we also don't need these uh, spaces like that okay so this is all that we need uh, we don't need the dependencies all right uh, in the plugins we only specify the version but it doesn't actually really matter uh, in fact I'm gonna remove it uh, I just want I just want to have like only the things that we need we don't need the target folder this is what SPT generated uh, on its own we don't need this whoops right because what I want to show you is that uh, you know you can start with your own project uh, it doesn't really matter uh, if the project that you're working on in which you create the scaffoldings it doesn't really matter that it, it doesn't it doesn't need to be created by uh, by Jitterate itself um, all right so let's remove that um, <laughs> delete yes okay we got the target folder delete all right so we basically have the minimal uh, project okay we just have the build SPT file where we specify the Scala version and we see auto start server false and we have build properties right and again it doesn't really matter that this was uh, generated by Jitterate uh, you know you could have created this manually so again imagine that this is our project we're working in it and we want to define a few scaffoldings for ourselves okay this is not for someone else this is not gonna be on github this is gonna be part of this of this project okay so we start by using the scaffolding plugin so we go over here we say uh, new uh, file new file it's gonna be called plugins.spt you can call however however you want the ending just needs to be spt and I'm gonna save us some time I'm just gonna copy paste this plugin so this comes from found weekends generate it's the spt generate scaffold plugin and the version is 0.11.0. the only thing that we need to do now is we need to, in in the root project we need to create a directory called dot g8 okay and inside of it we're going to create other directories which are going to be scaffolding so every folder inside of it its name it's going to be the scaffolding so for example we're going to have uh, two folders we're going to say um, there's going to be a folder called what's happening I said new folder there we go um, one folder is going to be called controller and another folder is going to be called uh, main okay so we have two scaffoldings now right so we can uh, use a uh, command which comes from this plugin to uh, generate uh, something that is inside of it and notice that if there are no files inside of it then none of it is actually going to work so in fact let me go and try it so let's uh, open the console let's just start SBT so SBT will take a few seconds to start this project and the command that we're getting from this plugin is called a g8 scaffold okay so generate scaffold okay so um, now it loaded now I load it all right so downloaded the plugin there we go all right so we can do g8 uh, pretty much tab and we can do space and we can do tab and ideally it should auto complete uh, one of the controller or main and I have no idea why it doesn't work right but we can actually go over here and say uh, controller right and it says success but it actually didn't uh, didn't really create anything uh, so it just created a target folder so something jumped around uh, you can also do g8 scaffold 
main, okay? But it didn't create anything, right? So in order for it to create something, uh, it needs at least one file, right? So we need to go in there, and I'm gonna use the dot keep file, which is a convention. Uh, Git also uses the dot keep um, dot keep files because Git by default uh, does not push empty folders either. So this is just a convention to uh, call files like this, okay? So now now that is there, I can do G8 scaffold controller, and what it will do is it will go and because there's nothing, there's no directory structure on the controller, it will just generate this .keep file into the root of our um, of our project, right? So it should appear over here once I press enter, like this, and there we go, right? And if we had some directory structure in there, uh, where is it? Uh, let, let me first of all, let's let's run it again first of all, because it should say skipping existing files. So as I, as I already mentioned. Um, uh, generate by default skips files and directories that already exist and if you if you were using g8 we would be able to do something like force but this one for some reason that doesn't accept that right so uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to delete this okay right and if we had some directory structure in there right so for example if you wanted to say a controller should generate a source main Scala um, I don't know controller dot Scala or something like this okay we don't need the keep file anymore Okay, then it will generate this whole this whole file. Let's also put something inside of that file. Oh, it's actually a folder. Hold on, new file, uh, controller.scala. Okay, okay, controller.scal. Let's remove that. Okay, let's re rename this Scala. Okay, and we can do something like, I don't know, object controller or something like this. Okay, for now, let's, ju let's just do that. Okay, so uh, now we can go over here and uh, I just can just go up and I can just say GA scaffold controller. Okay, and it generated uh, this whole thing, right? So it generated the source main Scala controller, right? As you can see, this is a different file. Okay, so this is not the one from G8, right? This is a copied version of it. Let's also put something else in here. Let's say message string. We're just gonna say hi. Okay, uh, let's go into the main one and also create a file in there. Uh, source main main Scala main dot Scala. Let's just put something like this in there. Okay, so now we can, for example, run uh, G8 scaffold main like this, and now we should be able to run because now there is a there is a main uh, which is over there, right? So just copy copy the file over. Uh, we can also delete the controller and uh, regenerate it again, right? So we can do G8 scaffold controller, okay? And now that it's generated and it has the um, not this one. Um, Oh, see, I, I put the message in the in the wrong one. Uh, this this actually happens very often. Okay, I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that, and I want to remove this controller, and I want to generate it again. And now I should be able to go over here and say something like uh, controller dot. Huh, is it a class or an object? It's an object. Okay, controller dot. No, it's message, right? Message controller dot uh, message like this, right? So if we run run this now, we should see not hello world. We should see hi. Why don't we see hi? Why don't we see hi? Hold up. Where's the main? Uh, oh yeah, I change I change it in the in the template again. I needed to change it over here. Main should go to controller dot hi. It's very it's very uh, very confusing. I, I jump to wrong files all the time. Okay, so now running it now it says hi. Now, when we were using the templates, we saw that we could also uh, have template fields. So for that to work, we need a file called uh, default properties inside of every use case that, that we need to generate. Right? So, so I, I just said use case, but what I meant is inside of every every scaffolding. So for example, over here inside of the controller uh, folder, we can uh, have a file called default dot properties proper properties. Right, so over here we can just go and say, for example, let's have a variable for controller hyphen prefix, and let's just say that the default value is going to be hello world, like this. Okay, so now if we if we run it, uh, controller, it will say, hey, specify the prefix, you know, and you can say whatever you want, whatever, whatever I want, like this. Okay, now in this case it didn't do anything because the controller already existed. Right, so let's do that. Let's do it again. Or you can also press enter. It will use it will use hello world. So now it generated the controller, but obviously we haven't used the template, um, you know, the the, the name in there um, at all. Okay, let's close all the others. Let's close that as well. So let's uh, delete the controller. Um, let's go into the template again. Okay, so over here now, um, let me open this one actually, this one and this one. Okay, so uh, maybe I can actually do that. 
Okay, so we have this variable, so we can use it uh, wherever we want. Okay, so for example, over here, uh, we can say dollar dollar. I'm sorry, dollar dollar, and between them, we can use this controller hyphen prefix, right? So we can do controller. Uh, I'm sorry, underscore uh, prefix. Okay, and I want a bit more space in there. Okay, so we do controller prefix controller. Okay, so if we run this now, and we're gonna say hi, I'm hi, I'm that like this. Okay, it's going to generate a controller and it's going to put it over there. Now, as I already mentioned, Jitterate is not Scala specific, so it doesn't care if what you're generating is going to compile or not. Having said that, if you remember when we specified the to do app, uh, you know, with all the caps uh, to do, it actually rewrote it like this. So there is this thing called uh, formatting, right? So if you can go over here, formatting template fields, you click on that and you can see that um, after. Uh, after the uh, you know the variable name you can do a semicolon format equals and then in the quotation marks you can just specify one or more of of these formatting rules so this is what we're going to do we're going to go um, back over here and we're going to say that in the template it should not just use controller prefix it should also format it in fact uh, let me actually do that again okay so it should also format it right equals quotes and let's do for example word and Camel, right? So words should remove all of the um, all of the characters that are you know not from A to Z, right? So the spaces and this apostrophe and this uh, you know this um, exclamation mark and the camel case should uh, rewrite this into camel case, right? So the you know that each new word starts with a with, with a camel thing. Okay, let's do that. Let's remove it. Click, click. Let's go here. Okay, let's do hi, I'm I'm Vlad, like this, and let's see what it generated. And yeah, so it removed the spaces, it removed the ampersand, it removed the exclamation mark. It sort of tried to do the camel case, but there were no spaces anymore, so it couldn't figure out uh, the words. In fact, let's change the order and let's see what um, what happens then. Okay, let's change the order. Let's say let's do camel first, and then let's do word. Maybe that's going to look different. Okay, let's do that. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, I'm Vlad, like this. Okay. And see, that looks better. So uh, we should probably use, you know, have used that. So all I wanted to show you is that, you know, the order matters. Now, these variable names also participate in directory names. And in fact, this is one of the most useful um, uh, use cases of Jitterate that uh, it can that the template fields can be used for a uh, folder expansion. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, let's go to default properties and introduce two more. So let's say that we have the organization name let's say dev inside you so that I don't have to type it every time and I'm going to do project underscore name equals to do uh, let's not have spaces here to do app like this okay so now for example we can go to source main Scala and instead of generating the controller right away over there we can actually go and we can say um, let's create a new file and in fact we're also going to use it um, not only in the, in the directories but also in file names okay so I'm going to create a new file and uh, let me actually create more space over here okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, dollar dollar okay so now I'm going to say organization underscore name and now instead of saying you know semicolon form and equals uh, there's a special syntax for directories and files so instead of that we're going to say underscore underscore okay and now we can specify exactly the same rules as we had before so in this case I uh, would want for example everything to be lowercase right so we have uh, you know the organization name for example by default is dev inside you so everything is going to be lowercase then we can do comma and we can specify the next rule and the next rule is going to be uh, package and package is going to replace all the spaces with dots okay and now there's another one a uh, very similar called packaged with a D in the end packaged okay and this one will go and replace all the dots was the slashes okay so this one will already generate three folders right so it's gonna go uh, dev inside uh, you okay um, <laughs> what do we want uh, we want also the project name okay so we have the project name over here so we can just go and so first of all let me press enter over here right so this is the uh, in fact, I made a mistake. I wanted to generate uh, the entire file. Um, maybe, hold on, let me rename. And um, because VS Code can also expand things for you and I don't want to confuse you. So let me delete that again. So let me now create a folder over here. I'm going to paste that back in and now I'm going to press enter because again, Visual Studio Code allows me to, you know, to do a slash here and just keep typing, but I don't want to do that. Okay. So I want to do that. And inside of it, I want to create another folder for the project name. I don't understand why it sometimes doesn't do that. But anyway, again, dollar dollar. In this case, we're using the project name variable, right? 
this one over here and uh, in this case we're gonna say lower and word right because we want to remove all the um, um, all these spaces okay all right so over here we're going to move the controller inside of that folder and we'll also uh, let me open the controller so over here we use the uh, control prefix format camel word and we want to use the same thing over here right so we don't just want to generate a controller we want to rename the controller into dollar dollar uh, controller prefix and then underscore underscore and then we're gonna have word and we're, let's do camel first let's do camel uh, comma word like this okay so let's see what is happening here uh, let's remove this controller okay let's try to generate this whole thing again okay uh, controller prefix um, let's create let's call it uh, I don't know user user controller okay user uh, organization name let's do com com dot uh, dev inside you okay like this and the project name yeah let's let's keep to do app that's fine okay so let's see what it generated it generated com dev inside you to do app user controller which is exactly what we want and the object inside of it is also called user controller right we can also go ahead and you know generate the packages and, and and all of these but basically we already know how to use the template fields for that yet another place where the template fields can uh, participate you know the expansion of the template fields is when you define other template fields as we actually have already seen when we're using it so for example we can say url equals https colon slash slash and then we're going to say organization name so i'm just going to copy it from there okay and again we can format it uh, format that as for example uh, word and lower like this okay so we're just going to do that and in the end we're going to say dot com okay dot com we're not going to use this variable i just want to show you the expansion okay so if we go over here um, it's going to say that and organization for example is dev inside you and project name is blah and now url as you can see is https console search dev inside you.com okay because it did word and lower and then dot uh, com okay so we're going to press enter it's not going to generate anything because we already have the controller uh, oh no it will generate because you know because now i use different variables so it, it went and uh, generated a bunch of stuff now there are also two special fields and they're special because they behave a little bit differently uh, one is called description Right, so if you have if you say okay this um, scaffold uh, generates a controller or something like this okay now it is special because uh, obviously the user is not going to be prompted for it right so this can't be changed uh, but it but it's being displayed over here and as you can see the quotes are unnecessary okay so we can do that I'm gonna press enter a bunch of times let me do it again okay so it's displayed like this the scaffold generates a controller and um, you know and and then it prompts you for all all, all of the other fields and the next field is a name so if you have uh, a field called name a template field called name then it will be used as a as the name of the directory okay so for example let's say um, um, I don't know let's 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 say con uh, con directory or something like this okay so if we generate it now it will say con directory obviously you can change it right so I'm just gonna type some some garbage so it, now it's changed and now um let me let me actually remove not, not remove but let me collapse it okay so what will happen now is it will not generate this structure with source main scala it will generate a structure which will start with with this stuff okay so we'll generate this and under under it, it will be source main scala right so it should be a symbol symboling of these okay let me press enter a bunch of times okay so now it generated this ad as blah 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 and inside of it it generated everything else okay so for for um you know it always depends on your use case but uh you know it's just one of these things that you need to know that there's like this hardwired behavior for uh description and for name another thing that you can do with template fields i'm actually not going to show it to you we're going to go to the website instead and i'm going to show you to you over there uh what you can do is you can use them as um a boolean variables so if you go to over here mm -hmm. Uh, conditionals okay so if you have a, a, a variable whatever however you know a template field however you call it and it evaluates to either y yes or true then if you use it as a boolean variable which means if you say dot truthy at the end then you know the engine behind the scenes will try to see if the expression is true or false and then based on that it will uh, use either this template or 
that template, right? So you can see the syntax over here. So there is dollar dollar, you have the if, you have the else if, you have the end if and so on. And you can also use these expressions over here to figure out whether you want to generate a folder or not. So for example, in this case, basically if the JVM um, flag is specified uh, over here, if the JVM flag is specified, then you know use it as, as the name, otherwise uh, this folder is not going to be created. All right, so we're pretty much done with the scaffolds. Let's start creating our own templates, which is going to be very, very similar. And uh, so let me go to my, uh, back to my VM, we can actually close this uh, folder. So it turns out that there is a generate template for creating generate templates. Okay, so we can do SPT new uh, found weekends, weekends slash generate dot G8. Okay, like this. So this is already a prepared template for other templates. So you can always use this as a starting point. All right, let's use the default name. We don't really care. Uh, generate version, sure. I guess this is the latest one, SPT version 128, sure. All right, so it created a folder called My Template Project. And uh, as I already mentioned, because SPT is very picky about this whole G8 stuff, the first thing that you always need to do is you want to rename it, right? So you want to rename it into the same thing, but then dot uh, G8. Okay, so now, you know, I'm not even gonna go into it, but, um, you know, we can we can already use it, right? So we can say SPT new and then file colon slash slash, and then we can do, in fact, uh, let me do hyphen my and then tab. Okay, so all we need to do is to say file colon hyphen hyphen, uh, sorry, um, slash slash, and then we can use it directly, right? So you can also go for the full path, right? So you can do home, uh, Vlad, uh, dav, uh, my template project G8. Okay, you can also do that, but we obviously don't need this, okay? So I can already do this, and it will use this template to uh, generate something else. In fact, maybe we should do this. Uh, let's run it. Let's see what's inside. I have no idea what's inside. Uh, okay, my something project, sure. Um, all right, so it already generated a my something project. So we can open that before even we open the template. Okay, my something project. And this is what it generated, right? So it's a simple SBT build. If you go to build SBT, you know, it set a few things. Um, use, it used the name, um, it used the SBT version, and it created some, some stuff. Okay, so we can pretty much close this and we're actually more interested in the template itself. So let's go and open it. So code my template project dot G8 like this. There we go. All right, so it seems like the template itself is a Scala project. Okay, so this is an SPT project. Uh, also, there is a, you know, there's a build and, you know, there's a, you know, build properties and so on and so on. We're going to go through all of this real quick. The first thing that we're going to go th through, though, is the readme file, which these days doesn't need to be called markdown. It can actually be just called MD and it looks a bit prettier. And then um, VS Code is actually recognized. Okay. So if you go to VS uh, to, to the readme, all it contains is basically a link to Jitterate. So you're supposed to fill this out, right? So you say, you know, this is a Jitterate template for, um, I don't know, for some stuff. And it's written in, I don't know, 2019, right? You fill out your, your name, right? My name, just do Vlad. Let's just do email at blah.com. Um, hmm. To the extent possible under law, the authors have dedicated all copyright and related uh, and uh, neighborhood, neighboring rights to this template to the public domain worldwide. So this is a template uh, for the Creative Commons license. And uh, I'm not a lawyer, but I believe that this license is even more permissive than the typical Apache or MIT licenses because this is basically a zero attribution license. So uh, people can use your template without uh, specifying anywhere that they are using your template and they can modify it and do whatever the hell they want with it. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is uh, what is recommended. Okay, uh, what else do we have? We have the build properties. So it's using the one that date um, itself. It is using two plugins. Uh, let me create more space over here. Um, oh, that's cool. I didn't know that uh, that it would disappear like this. All right. So for some reason there are curly braces here. Okay, we don't we don't actually we don't actually need them. Uh, so basically it uses one uh, SPT plugin, which is you know the Jitterate, and um, it also uses a library dependency for the scripted plugin. Now scripted plugin is an SPT specific thing. It's a plugin for testing other plugins. And in fact, there's going to be a link down in the description. Let me go to the website real quick. I actually have it open somewhere um, over here. Right, so uh, this is in, in the uh, SPT documentation. So what it allows you to do it is it allows you to use a domain specific language to uh, run a few things. So for example, like this, you can run a, run a command, right? Send a task to SPT, or you can uh, make sure that some file was created and so on and so on and so on. In fact, by default, uh, what uh, Jitterate will do is it will actually um, uh, run the tasks in the project that you're generating. Uh, I'm gonna show you this a bit more. I, I don't wanna go into depth into this uh, scripted plugin because this is 
something very very specific to SBT uh, but uh, what you need to know is when you're creating a Jitterate template you can also use this uh, scripted plugin to test the project that you're generating right so you can not only test that it compiles but you can also you know generate tests and these tests will run so by default um, Jitterate generates a scripted file that tells SBT to run the tests let me go back to the VM so notice that the scaffolding plugin is not being used over here right because you need the scaffolding plugin in the final project you don't need it in the template also notice that all the files that we're going through they're there just to make the template project work uh, all that you know the final project cares about you know all, all, the, all the things that will be generated are inside of the source folder so if you go into source main g8 these are the things that will be generated for the project uh, folder right and this default uh, properties file will be removed so we can go in there for example as we have seen you know it will generate spt version 1 to 8 it will generate this stop file it will generate this built spt as we have already seen and it will use the default properties exactly the same as scaffolding was exactly the same rules right so if the if the name is not specified it will generate it into the current folder you know it will not prompt you for description uh, all the variables everything else work exactly the same all right so let's collapse this one again and let's look at what is left so there's a git ignore file for the scaffolding plugin itself and you know while we're developing it i'm not going to use metals but you know typically for all of my projects these days i just do this bloop and also dot metals also there is a travis dot uh, yaml so uh you know you can um run the tests for your uh, template uh, automatically on Travis. And by the way, if you, in case you don't know this, so Travis is a CI server and um, a continuous integration server. And for open source projects, you can actually use it for free. Okay, so uh, it's really cool that it already comes pre-configured. So um, basically all it will do when it arrives at Travis, it will do SPT and you can pretty much ignore all of that and it will just run test. Okay, so it will, it will just run SPT test, okay? And I'll show you uh, what is going to happen once we do it um, ourselves. In fact, maybe let's do it now. So uh, as we have seen before, when we use this template, you know, I said SPT new file colon slash slash, and I generated uh, a project. Uh, what you can also do is you can use SPT itself. Okay, so we are inside of this template. Uh, we're going into SPT. SPT is going to load this template project. And then because we're using this um, Jitterate plugin, we can actually just say G8 and it will go and uh, generate the project into the target folder. Now, it's not going to look exactly the same uh, because, for example, it will not remove the build our properties files uh, and I believe that this is just because how SPT works so SPT by default it just copies everything over okay now I have no idea again why this takes forever it should finish in just a few seconds all right I actually have no idea what happened and actually died on me I had to kill it uh, maybe my network is not being stable or something in any case so what we can do over here is we can run g8 and it will go into the target folder let me collapse project so we'll go in the target folder and as you can see right now it just says dot history so if we go into g8 it will actually run the template and apply all the default arguments so over here it went and it created this whole thing which is basically um you know coming from here right so it put this whole thing in there and as you can see it didn't remove the default the properties folder which is something that would usually happen if you use the template uh, properly properly and you can also do g8 test right and there's basically an alias so you can just basically say test which is why exactly you know in, in the travis it was configured like this right so you can say spt test you, you know and you can also pass a few parameters but that's not the point the point is that you can say test and now it will generate into spt test over here it will generate you know this my template project scripted and then again this whole thing and now it takes a bit longer because it tries to compile and it actually tries to run the test we don't have any tests we're not generating any tests but at least it's going to try to compile stuff so if we actually go into the um into this file where was it i just need to make sure that i'm going into the right directory okay source main g8 uh source main stop okay so over here uh, I want to let it finish, so it finished. So if, I, for example, if I remove this um, uh, curly brace, okay. So if I say G8, nothing's gonna, you know, it's just gonna copy uh, everything over. It's not gonna do anything. But if I do task, it will actually copy it over into SPT task, and it will at least try to compile it, right? So technically, it will also try to run the test. But as I already said, we're not generating any tests. But uh, right now, it should fail. And uh, yeah, let's wait for it to happen. I'm actually gonna collapse the sidebar so that we have more space for the for the error message like this. All right, there we go. So if we scroll up, we should see something like um, runtime exception, fail test. Here, cause of test exception, line one, command fail, test fail. Okay, so uh, that's useless. This is, this is what we need, okay? This is what we need, uh, stop. 
Oh, it, by the way, it uses the Scala 212 base. We probably don't want that. Uh, let's go to build in source main G8. Let's do 212.9, okay? But that's not the point. The point is that that it didn't work, it didn't compile, and so, uh, you know, uh, useful, okay? Uh, the last thing that I'm going to do, probably the last thing, actually, uh, I'm actually going to do, to go to, let's collapse everything, to the original build file. Let me... Um, let me close everything, close others, okay? To the original build file, and I wanna, I wanna show you how, how the template itself is set up. So let's do that, and let's do that. Now, if you're not familiar with SBT, then this looks uh, very, very scary, but in fact, uh, this is very, very simple, okay? So it says, this build is for the uh, for this JRED template to test the template around G8 or G8 test from the SBT session. This is what we did. And, um, you know, you can also see some URL for more details. So we're gonna remove that, because I want to basically, uh, you know, desugar this whole thing, okay? If we're not using a multi-build, we don't need this whole lazy val root and project and files, blah, blah, blah. We can just remove that and we can just do this, okay? So we're enabling the scripted plugin. Uh, if you remember, this is the plugin from here, um, this scripted plugin, okay? The plugin for the test. Now, again, if we're not using a multi-build, we don't need these uh, settings, right? So we can just do this and we can just do that and because we because of this we don't need the commas right so we can do this and we can do that okay so it basically sets the name okay now this thing and by the way there is a new syntax for this so in the past you would say test and test these days you just do this okay instead okay so it basically says that when you run test it should actually run the tests in ga test okay ga test Okay, so this is some uh, scary SBT syntax, okay? But what I would actually do is, instead, I would just go and say add command, uh, command alias, and I'm just gonna say test means g at test, okay? And I can pretty much remove this whole thing, okay? Now over here, uh, there is some setting for scripted launch options, okay? So it's just a list and I prefer to use sequence, by the way. We can just do enter over here, and every time we have comma space, which is here, here, and here, we're just gonna do comma enter instead, okay? So this is just a sequence with a bunch of flags, and we also have a resolver, and in my preparation for this video, we actually don't need this resolver, okay? So this is all we have, and we can also shorten this, okay, so this is just one gig, and uh, yeah, so this is the whole uh, build file. Um, yeah, so now it's very, very simple. We're just enabling the script, setting the name, having a command alias, and we're setting a bunch of flags for the scripted plugin so that it doesn't die on us, okay? One of the last things that I'm gonna show you is that if we go to default properties, then we can actually um, use variables, for example, for SBT version, right? Now you could hard code 1.2.8, which is the latest version right now, and you know, every time a new version comes out, you know, you would go and update your template, but there's actually a way to fetch the latest version from Maven. So if we go over here, and if I go to um, search.maven.org, and if I search for, um, well, let's try SPT, all right? So we find this or Scala SPT, blah, blah, blah. Let's just click on that, okay? So uh, pretty much, uh, yeah, artifact ID, SPT, this one. Uh, hold on, all versions, uh, where is it? One, two, eight, let's click on that. Okay, so if we go to this, then we, we see that the group ID is org scala spt, and the name of the project is just spt. Okay, so I can just copy that. Okay, I can go back here, and instead of specifying one to eight manually, I can just do something like this. I can say maven, which looks like a function call. Okay, I can just paste this in org scala spt, spt, and please take only the stable versions, right? So we don't need all of these. Uh, where was it? Go back. We don't need all of these RC and milestones and whatever, whatever, right? So it will it will go and fetch 12.8 for us, right? And it's also typical to do the same thing for the Scala version. Scala uh, version equals Maven, and it's org .scala lang and we're gonna grab the Scala distribution and also please only the stable version. All right, so now let's go and uh, let's actually go close it and let's try to use our template, okay? So we're just gonna do spt new my template g8 and let's not forget to do file call slash slash, okay? And now because we're using these uh, default properties, it will actually ask us and populate the default values with the latest versions from Maven, okay? So as you can see, it grabbed one to eight and it grabbed two thirteen zero, which is super cool. Okay, but it doesn't didn't really create anything because we already have a folder like this. By the way, I forgot to mention one thing that when you're running your tests, um, and uh, you know it will it will test your your template. Um, it will also fail when you just say G8 instead of G8 test 
if you um, if you do something wrong in your template fields, for example, right? So it can catch some some few basic things, but obviously it's not going to fail if you created uh, errors in your um, you know in in the in the source files that you're generating, right? For this, you actually need to run a GA test. And in fact, I already closed the um, VS Code instance, but let me actually open it again. I wanted to show you that if you were to get into the scripts plugin uh, you would need to put a file into uh, source test ga test okay so if we have source we can create a file over here test uh, g8 test okay this file okay so um is this a file i can't i'm not sure hold on file test. yeah this is a file okay so over here right by, by default what uh what what generate is doing it is doing uh this test okay and if i go back to um i'm sorry if i go back to um to the scripted plugin this is what it's doing right so it just sends it's just sending this uh task command to spt okay so this is just this uh the main specific um thing but you know this thing is is being enabled for you by default but if you want to do something else you know if you want to ensure that some uh files were generated or some directories were generated you would go in here and you would need to learn the dsl a little bit for yourself but now i'm going to remove it actually i don't need it like that now since you're generating an entire project uh, you might as well also add some scaffoldings uh, for for this project right so um, you know as I said you know you're creating this this entire directory so you can go over here and you can create a new folder you can call it dot uh, g8 and inside of it you can create the scaffolds um, and the problem with it arises if you use um, if you have name collisions in your template fields right so for example let's say in your um, in your scaffold uh, you would use a um, a variable called uh, name right or a variable called spt version then uh, it will get expanded uh, from, from from this default dot properties file right so if you you know if you want to be secure that you know you can you know that, that they sort of live in different namespaces the way you do it is you don't generate your scaffolds in there you generate your scaffolds over here in source main and instead of g8 you go into scaffolds okay so in fact uh, what we actually can do is we can um, let's see so uh, we can uh, copy we can copy half an arm and the uh, the stuff from the from the to do app uh, mm -hmm, to do app okay so over there we had the g8 folder okay so we can just copy the entire context uh, over here into uh, source main scaffolds okay let's do that okay so if we open scaffolds now we should see the controller and the main okay so now if we actually go back to um let's go back to the console and let's run our template again my template mm -hmm. whoa what happened there oh i typed in code that's what happened oh jesus okay i want to do file mm -hmm. my half in template half in project dot eight okay i'm just gonna say blah app and i don't care about that okay so i can open the blah blah app like this with Visual Studio Code. And as you can see, it created this .g8 folder for us. Again, as a reminder, um, we don't have the .g8 folder over here, right? We have the scaffolds folder, okay? So um, it created it and it put the controller, you know, with the default properties and blah, blah, blah. So we can we can go and start using them, okay? So it didn't touch any of these names. It didn't do anything, of the, uh, anything uh, over there. But actually, if we try to run them, uh, they're not gonna work because we actually forgot. Uh, we've forgotten to, uh, let me close it. Uh, we've forgotten to go into G8, into source, I'm um, sorry, into project. We forgot to add the scaffold plugin, right? So I'm not going to show it to you because I showed it to you already before, right? But, you know, don't forget that if you're using the scaffolds, you know, the project that you are generating needs to use the scaffolding plugin. Just remember one thing that, uh, you know, even if you're using the scripted plugin to test your templates, your scaffolds are not going to be magically tested. Just one of those things that you need to know. So you need to learn something about the DSL and you need to force SBT to run your uh, scaffolds as well and test them okay so for that you need to dive a little bit into this uh, script scripted uh, domain specific language okay all right so the last thing that we're going to do today is we're actually going to commit this uh, thing to github and fetch it once from github and i'm also going to remove this directory right away because uh, you know this this github project right away because i just want to show you show to you how it works okay so we want to go into uh, my template my template project .ga. okay we're going to do a git init uh, get add everything, get commit hyphen am. I'm gonna say initial commit. All right, so now we need to go to my GitHub account, uh, right? GitHub, and we need to create a new repository. 
and I'm gonna call it, uh, I can call it somehow differently, okay, I can call it uh, blah.g8, okay, and if, you, if I don't touch anything over here, then uh, GitHub will show me how to add something to, a, to, a, to an already existing repository, okay, so we did already all of that, uh, we did already all of that, uh, all we need to do is we need to do this, okay, so I can just copy that, go over here, and paste that like this, okay, uh, my key, like this, all right, so now it's pushed. Okay, so I can refresh this and I will see the whole thing that we just generated. And now I can go over here and can say spt new file colon slash dev inside you. And then I can do blah dot g8. I called it blah, right? Yeah, I think I did. Okay, so now I will fetch that and it will apply this template from GitHub instead of using, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I, I said file. I just kind of get used to the same file. We actually need to do to do that, okay? them inside you, blah, G8, okay, like this. So now it will resolve it from GitHub instead of from our local uh, local folder. Okay, let's call it whatever, blah, 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 we don't really care. So we can uh, open whatever with Visual Studio Code and it generated this. And our scaffolds would actually work if we had added the plugin, uh, but I didn't do that, okay? So it generated all of these things, you know, all of these latest versions and blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, there we go. Let me actually go back to GitHub and remove it right away. Uh, where is it, settings? Let's go down, danger zone, uh, delete this repository, blah dot g8, I understand. All right, okay. There we go. And it is gone. Cool, let's go back to my VM. All right, cool, that's pretty much all I have for you today. Have fun playing around with Jitterate. Maybe create a couple of templates of your own. In fact, in the next two videos, we're going to create a slightly uh, bigger template together. And yeah, as always, it's been Vlad, devinsideyou.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did. Subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you learned something, consider supporting me on Patreon. But most importantly, take care.